Hi folks, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built these insulated doors through to the storage spaces in our loft up here. So stick around and I'll show you how we did it. So it's time to get a handle on another well overdue project. And like many at the moment, it's a case of using up scrap woods and stuff I've already got lying around. And this is for the three doors which go from the loft rooms out into the uninsulated roof spaces which we use for storage. Now we're going for no frills here, just super simple, using up different thickness timbers, uh, different types of timber, got plywood and pine. But basically we want just a simple, strong, flat door that we can insulate. Now I decided to use pocket holes, but really you could just simply butt join and screw these. But the benefit with the pocket holes is they're completely concealed on the inside of the door. Now for the skin of the door, I've got some 6mm or 9mm MDF and that's just going to be the face on the room side of the door. I'm squaring up the frame uh, and then I'm just roughly making a line uh, on that board. And it's slightly oversized and you'll see me cut that back in a minute. And that MDF is just simply glued and, and nailed on. Again, you can attach it however you want, as long as you've got to fill it afterwards where you're going to paint. And now this is the point where I just went around with a flush trim bit in the router, and that just makes sure that everything's super smooth and there's no stepping between the two, uh, two layers of the door. And then a bit of two-part filler just to smooth out any of the dinks or knots in the wood and also any of the little pinholes in the front face of the MDF. Right, now we're onto the actual insulation side of things. I've got plenty of this 25mm insulation left over from the projects that we've been doing over the past few years. I need 50mm. I've cut the framework down to 50mm in depth. So two layers of this gives me a 50mm uh, layer within the door. Now the original idea was to put a second skin of MDF or plywood on the back but I simply didn't think that was necessary. You're only ever gonna see the inside of the door if you're going into the loft and a bit of exposed foil is nothing compared to what's out there. Now we're on to hanging doors and well, these little openings are lined out with some plywood offcuts years ago and they're not perfect so there was a little bit of fiddling to get these doors nice and evenly spaced in the openings So at this point I realised what a pain chiselling plywood can be because all the grains go in different ways and even with a sharp chisel it's not particularly easy to get a clean mortise there. But anyway, the, the hinges were set in there, then I could get on and hang the door. Now we're dealing with a 60mm thick door here, so significantly thicker than a normal interior door. For that reason as it closes you need to work back that leading edge on a slight angle and that just means that it will clear the lining as it closes and you won't have to have a huge gap all the way around the door. So I think I was shooting for a kind of 2-3mm gap here and like I said there's a bit of variation in the lining but we pretty much got there. And then by tightening in those last few screws on the hinges that just snugs it across by another millimetre or so. Now 
I then temporarily put a little strip of uh, wood on the outside or on the inside room and also a little bit of hardware so I could pull it tight. That would mean that I could pull the door shut as I installed these door stops. I pre-cut them whilst I was out in the light in the room and then crawled through so I could pull it tight and then install those. Now what I'm aiming for here is to create a two or three millimeter space between the lining and the door. And that's because I'm gonna use a rubber gasket to draft proof the door. So I've got a little spacer and I'm holding that in between before I fix the, the door stop in and then we won't have any problems in the future. Then it's time to just jump straight into a quick undercoat and primer to get that ready for painting. I'm not gonna make them look like doors. I'm just aiming to paint them with the same emulsion, the light gray emulsion as the walls. So really simple, just give it a bit of a rub back and then go straight on with that. And the whole thing using a, a normal emulsion type roller as well just helps get the same finish on both parts of the wall. Okay, so we jumped ahead a couple of weeks now and it's done. Um, all three of them are complete. The only exception is I've still got to trim out a little bit around the outside, but it's such an improvement to have um, compared to what we had before, which was just insulation, insulation wedged in there. The main thing I've noticed is, as well as the draft and the, the kind of thermal part of it, is the road noise and kind of outdoor noise is cut down completely. All of this is quite soundproof because it's so much, you know, solid insulation there and the weak spot was definitely here. Still undecided on the, the latch or the, the lock I'm gonna put on there. Probably just be one of those star keys. Uh, that way we can take the key out and uh, stick it up on the windowsill or somewhere where the kids aren't gonna go in and uh, quite yet. When they're a bit older, they might use it as a den. Now finally, the electrics are all done up here as well. So we've got a LED baton in there and a little fuse spur type switch in there. Now, the other thing I mentioned earlier on in the video is uh, this seal that I put in. This is just stuff I already had, otherwise I would have gone with white. Um, but that seal is a huge help as well because it's those drafts that kind of come through. And what you find is at the top of the house, the, the wind whipping across the roof creates, uh, I guess, a negative pressure. And it does, you can feel it really draws the, the air up through the house. So cutting this out actually makes a difference all the way down through the rest of the house. All right, so it's not the most elaborate, exciting woodworking or, or renovation project I've done, but actually it's been a really worthwhile addition up here and one that you immediately notice the improvements on. Um, one thing I would say is that as far as the insulation goes in a loft like this, most of the building regs um, in new builds and uh, re retrofit kind of renovations will have a minimum you know, thickness of insulation for the whole thing. But somewhere where it always is let down is this sort of thing, the openings. And when I'm doing property photography and visiting a lot of new builds and kind of self builds on smaller scales, it, it's amazing the amount of access hatches like this, which are either not insulated at all or like this much polystyrene. And, you know, they might not even have the seals around them. And it just, it seems a bit of a waste. You know, if you're gonna spend thousands of pounds on uh, insulating and getting everything top notch as far as the main envelope of the roof, and then you just leave breezy holes in the wall um, where, a, you know, it's a real big cold spot there. So um, it makes sense to, where possible, detail it down to these little bits because it all makes a difference, especially on a big old house like this where any improvement is a big improvement. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.